right, what's going on guys? Good morning, good morning. I'm glad to see you guys again. Okay, today we're going to put together a three-way fishing river rig. And the point of the three-way uh, fishing river rig is so that you be able to catch fish on the on the river in the situation to where the bottom is, is crazy. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start putting this jumper together. You're going to need... Uh, these things you're gonna need a if you're fishing like at the dam at the locking dam or somewhere you're gonna need like a six ounce weight I'm talking about a big dam like a six gate dam seven gate dam five gate dam you need like a six ounce weight it's a bell weight you're gonna need some 10 12 15 pound line, okay? It doesn't have to be mustard, but that's what you need. Preferably, I use 10 to 12. You're gonna need these swivels, three-way swivel. This is Eagle Claw. Eagle Claw makes them. They make them a little bigger than this. You gotta have them. You got to have your leader line. You got to have your leader line. This is Eagle Claw, 80 pound Eagle Claw line. You can just buy it at Walmart. Uh, it's, it's like a dollar. It doesn't even cost much, but boy, it's strong and it's thick. It's leader line. I'm going to explain all that stuff to you. Now, um,. The next most important thing that you gotta have is your hook. You gotta have your hook. Okay? Alright. Now the, the point of the three-way swivel guys, like I was saying in the in the beginning of the video, is for the rocky bottom and the, the messed up bottom. Okay. This is a three-way swivel by Eagle Claw. See? Three-way swivel. The point of it is when you're fishing for like blue cats and channel cats and flatheads, when you fish like at a dam in the river and it's deep and all that stuff and it's cool and it's great. But if you take a straight line, let me like set, set this down. If you take a straight line, you know, a basic hook, hook got the weight right here, and it's on your line, and then you got a hook tied at the end, and you throw it out there, boom, you, you got your, your shad on there, or, or the crawfish on there, or whatever you, you're fishing with. You got it on there, and you throw it out there, and it's looking good, and the water's just boiling, you sitting there, and like an, an hour later, you don't get a bite. What's going on? Fishes ain't biting today. You get ready to pull it out the water, bam, you're hung break it off okay then you got to retie the hood put you another weight on there and boom so you put you another crawfish on there shad or what goldfish whatever you want you throw it out there bloosh it's looking good okay okay you sit there another 30 minutes fish just ain't biting again get ready to snatch it pull it out the water to check the bait you're hung break it off same old thing so Whoever invented the river rig, they got their thumbs up. They're probably dead and gone right now, but that's okay. The spirit lives on through us. All right, guys. The first thing you do with that river rig, <clears throat> the first thing I do is I get my 10-pound my line, right? And I get my weight. Now, when you get this, you get this this weight to go on your line. You got to make the lead on the line for the weight. You got to make it long enough. And when I say long enough, the whole point of all this is your weight is going to be here at the bottom, and up here, up here. Your bait is going to be up here. And you'll see that as I put this thing together, okay? 
your bait is going to be way up here and the weight is going to be at the bottom down in those cracks and rocks and all that stuff and the bait will be free so <clears throat> what the deal is when you fish in rivers that like it dams and stuff like that man uh at, at a dam man there's cars and and boats and and trees man huge giant trees that like to come out of the river with forest and stuff down there those fish live there and and there are spots in there where the fish live but when you cast your bait out there with all that junk down there your bait is subject to fall off in between it and the, the fish can't get it if it can't get to it he might smell it and say, hey i'm finna try this oh, i can't get to it he's gonna move on so you're not gonna catch anything there it is so when you do your river rig you got your bait suspended up above all those trees and rocks and cars and airplanes and whatever else is in there right <laughs> so <clears throat> then the fish can just swim up hey I, what's that i smell that he swims up to your bait bam he hits it wham you you got him you know then that's your job to catch him and that's what we're trying to do get you to the point where we can catch him okay so you take your bail weight you take your bail sinker and <clears throat> i have to say this this is going to be super simple okay this knot that i'm about to show you is the, the same knot that i use uh matter of fact on my video uh hey let's build uh, a light action rig a light action fishing rig it's, it's in my playlist go check it out and uh this is the only knot that i use i don't use any other knot the only knot that i use well it's not even really a knot that i use other than that is if I have a little, little bitty, teeny tiny hook trying to catch a, a bluegill, I can't, I can't make the uh, the loops I need because the hook hole is too small for the line to go through more than once. That's the only time I don't use it. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Okay, guys, this is how you do this. You take your bail weight. You stick it through your hole one time got to do it once take it again you got to hold your line it's going to try to move around two that's really just one loop okay you got to go through it to where it makes two loops so that'd be three go through it three times there it is okay guys see those loops see those two loops right there they're sticking up they're through the hole and you got to hold those because when you try to pull it a little bit, what the, what's going to happen is it's going to make those loops get real small. So you stick it through both, both loops, just like that. All right. Keep holding your line so it does not get away. Keep holding those loops. That's all you got to do. This is the main line right here. You see it hanging down. And I dropped it. Let's see. All right. Now we're going to wrap it around this main line. This this part, you're going to wrap it around the main part. About five times. Five times. Excuse me. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Now, you're going to stick that through those two loops. That end. Pull it tight. There it is. And when you first make it, don't just get it and put it on there and keep on getting up. Pull it. If it breaks, you tied it wrong. There it is. Now, there's my weight. This is how, how high up that the bait is going to be from the bottom. So the, the weight is going to be down in the, the rocks and, and the trees and all this the stuff that's littering the bottom down there, all that different junk, and your bait is going to be right here just like this. Because the weight's going to keep the line tight. When you when you cast out, <clears throat> excuse me guys, when uh, when when you cast out, you're going to reel your reel up and get it a little tight, and the weight is going to keep the line tight because it's going to be down there, and it's going to get hung. And the whole point of putting that on there with this small line is when it gets hung, when your fish comes through, and it's probably going to be a real big fish, uh, probably 8, 9, 10, <clears throat> 11 pounds, like if you had to lock and dam, or bigger than that, of course. Uh, when they hit it, lots of times when I do it, 
when the fish hits it, it'll hit it and it'll break this line, pop, but you, your hook is still on the other part of that three-way swivel and your main line, so you just reel the fish in. So anyway, <clears throat> You take your line again, get your three-way swivel. We already got our weight on there. And we stick it through one of the holes. It doesn't matter which one of the holes, it's one of the holes. And you do the same things, that same knot. One. And I can grab it two. All right, there it is. Now I'm going to hold this in a two big loop, with a big loop and a little loop. All right, you saw it shrink down a little bit. Go around to one, two, three, four, five. And you just stick it through both of those loops. Same thing again. You put it on there, pull it tight. If it breaks, it's wrong. I'm just making sure my camera, making sure my camera didn't get out of focus, guys. It'll do that. That is not cool. <clears throat> okay. Here's the next important thing. Your leader line, guys. Your leader line needs to be. If you're fishing like at a locking dam. Or you're at a, a, a place at the, where the dam is right up, right up from where you are, and the water just it's just pumping. It's like two or three gates running. You know that's a lot of water pressure, man. And, and it'll what it'll do is it'll it'll break your line. Excuse me, when you get a big fish on there, that if you got like I'm just gonna say you got like 30 pound line and and or 25 25 pound 20 pound line rather like 20 pound line like that. Uh, a big fish when it's it's swimming because it's got its tail. A big, a real big catfish or a big drum or or or, or a big old giant gar. If you hook him, when it it leaves, it's got that water pressure backing it up and it'll break your line. But if your line isn't big enough, so I use eighty pound line and it's that it's just that eagle claw. This is just the eagle claw line. You go to Walmart and buy it. It's like a dollar, man. A dollar, man. I don't even think it is two dollars. I really can't rem remember 100%, but it's, it's, it's not much. So, see how thick that is? That's what you want. So, you take this. You don't want it really, really, really long. You do not want this leader line super long. Let me get this cut and I'll explain to you why. Okay, your leader line. When you're uh when you're putting this hook line combo together, if you don't have this hook close to this to this uh to the three-way swivel, it's gonna be way out here, and then you got your your weight line, it'll wrap around it. Especially if you got live bait, that fish is gonna be swimming and it's gonna make a mess, man. It, and it, and the, believe it or not, the fish won't bite it. Maybe they see it and they're like, man, that's some line. You know, because most time when you catch a, <clears throat> well, when you're at a lock and then you catch big fish, you know, you catch big fish, you get, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 pound fish. Those fish have been alive a long time, guys. They've seen a hook, and you best believe they haven't been hooked before, and they know what a hook is, and they know what what line is when they see it. Hey, that's a hook and some line that's wrapped around that bait. I'm just gonna go over and catch me a old shad that's swimming free, you know, no matter how hungry hungry they are. So <clears throat> this is a um, this is a team catfish circle hook, okay? Team catfish circle hook. I use team catfish circle hooks, and I use uh, the Kamagatsu octopus circle hooks 
these circle hooks are slamming man check out my video um uh, the hottest catfish pond ever it's in my playlist fun fishing playlist um is in my homeboy scott's catfish pond man he's got like some big catfish in there and uh every catfish that hit you know we caught them everyone that hit uh even the small ones we we caught them um i didn't show every fish on that video but uh you know we caught them or or check out uh I found a wild pond under a bridge. Check out that video. It's like the second video in my playlist. Go check it out. You'll see all those fish I caught because I was I was using uh, the Kamagazu octopus hooks uh, and the Team Catfish Circle hooks on my poles. Okay. When a fish hits, when a fish hits a uh, a circle hook, period, guys. When they hit a circle hook, the hook if it's a catfish, it turns over. And, and and it'll hook them in their mouth. Uh, I've I've seen that with the catfish, and that's what it's supposed to do. But uh, I'm not saying you're gonna be fishing for both in. But if you catch a if if you if you're fishing a big old both in like six seven eight five six seven eight nine pounds hits that circle hook, uh, it doesn't turn over like this. It's gonna turn over like like that. It turns over like this. And it hooks them down in the bottom of the mouth. I guess because they're more like a, a toothy predator type deal. And it, and it hooks them real good. You know, uh, regular hooks. If, you, if you're if you fishing with a plain old uh, J hook and and it's big. And, you know, and, and they work. Hook, hooks are hooks. Hooks work. Some hooks are better than those. But anyway, you got a J hook and this big flathead sees this bluegill or this goldfish or whatever you got on there. And he hits it, boom. If you don't have a hook that's going to be sharp enough, strong enough, uh, or made correctly for that, his head is already going to be hard. And you'll hook him. But a real big uh, catfish, flathead, they're going to do this. They don't just swim and turn over. A big catfish, I'm telling you. You can feel it when you when you got on line. You got a big, a real big catfish, and he's on there, and you got your you got your 15 foot rod. You can feel that fish. He'll do this. The big catfish do not do that. They don't swing their head. They just swim and they turn over. You know, cause they're little catfish. But a big, full grown, 20, 30 pound catfish plus, he's gonna do that. Try to throw the hook out of his mouth. So what you want to do is. You want a hook that's gonna work. Now these, these uh, uh, team catfish circle hooks and the Kamagatsu octopus circle hooks have double my fish catching rate. Let's say if if I had a uh, excuse me, guy, my eyes a little irritated. If I had a uh, had a bar and I would say one to a hundred was top, and then I was fishing. 75 or 65%, 50% or or something like that. It doubled me up to like it well it didn't, it raised me up to like 80 80 to 90% uh catch rate because this year when I started using these hooks on my big fish. Now I'm talking about some, a little bitty little bitty plain old catfish, you know, which you, you generally can catch them. They're not that hard to catch. But when you uh when you start using these when they hit it, they're hooked. And when that big 40 pound uh, flathead comes in there and he hits that little, little bitty plane hook and he does this and spits that hook out, you realize this isn't going to work. I don't like this. Uh, I've caught this year uh, uh, a, a lot of 10s, you know, 15s. I've, I've caught uh, uh, a lot of uh, 11s and all that stuff, you know, in the regular water because I've been using these. Uh, these team catfish circle hooks and the Kamagatsu octopus hooks and I'm gonna give a shout out to my little brother Warren and I, I have to give props to people he doesn't even fish he's not even studying fishing he went fishing with me one time and he wasn't fishing he was just hanging out with me you know just cause I'm his brother and then he wanted to hang with me and uh, my brother was watching me uh, watching a YouTube show I was watching a catfish Dave 
on my on my phone. And uh he was like, Who is that guy? And I was like, Well this is this is Catfish Dave and, and Dave was actually talking about these hooks and I hadn't even used them. I had I had not even used these hooks, right? So Dave was talking about them. And uh and I was thinking about using them. So this is what I was using, guys. It's not the size I was using, but this is a kale hook. Alright. It almost looks like a circle hook, right? So I was using kale hooks number nine. Nine are kale hooks. And what was happening with me is I was fishing at the lock and dam um, over uh, over in the Aberdeen. And uh, when the a really, really big fish were hit, and I can't tell you how big they were because I never caught them. When they get in there and when it hit, and I know it was a flathead, it wasn't blues. I, uh, the blues, this was catching the blues. The, the big, the 9 aughts this is a 7 aught. This is not the size I use. But the 9 aught hooks that I was using, was, it'll catch the blue. It'll hook them. And what a kale hook does, the reason the kale hook was working, uh, when a catfish or whatever, a gar, I'll call gars with these, when they, when they hit it, this hook turns and it comes out their eye or it comes out around their eye. You know, and then they're hooked. But if it's a big flathead, and I didn't say a channel. I didn't say a blue. Okay, I said a big flathead catfish. Their their mouth is hard and the head is made different. And, and that hook, I have not ever had one of these come out of a, a flathead's eye or around his eye. It just it either, either was hooked in his mouth or he just kept on swimming. You know, so once uh once I went to Walmart and I was looking for these nine aughts, um nine out version of these kale hooks. My brother was with me and said, bro, uh, if you can't find a nine, why don't you try, you know, these octopus hooks. Here's them Kamagatsu octopus hooks that Catfish Dave was talking about. And I was like, he's like, look, and they're like an eight and, and they're a nine. You know, and they had eights and nines. And I said, well, you know what, bro, I'll try them. And boy, when I tried them, it changed the whole game as far as raising my catch rate. So, uh, I'm gonna give the the team catfish and the Kamagazu octopus hook companies their props again. So anyway, guys, this is what we want to do. We're gonna put this hook on this line. Okay, guys, you take this this uh hook just like this, and you're gonna do that same old knot. Nothing special. You're gonna run it through the eye. Once, twice, and it's easy to do because a nine aught hook, eight aught hook, seven aught hook has got a big eye. Two, go back through it. Okay, there it is. There's the two loops. There they are. Just as good. See the two loops? And you're going to pull it down a little bit. Keep this on the control. Keep this end, the main part of it, under control. Wrap around it, you know, about five times. Keep you gotta keep it under control now, guys. It'll it'll mess up if you let it. One. One. Two. Three. And the stiff line ain't playing. Four. Just pull it through the two loops again. That's all you got to do. Once you pull it tight, there it is, what it looks like. Bam! Now that's on there. This hook is on there. But we don't want that hook hanging way out here. We're gonna want the hook about this close to the uh, to the swivel. So what you do is you take your three-way swivel and you get one of the two free eyes. And I know you're not kindergartners, but uh, I'm making this video for people that don't know how to make these these rigs, and they're super good. These rigs are super good. 
And you're going to need it if you're going to fish like at a lock and dam and you want to try to go catch one of them big old catfish or, or whatever, you know, just something big just because you want to take a photo or just what you want to do and, or you think it's exciting and you want to try it. You're going to need this, guys. Okay, you get one of your eyes, free eyes, you run it through it. Bring the hook up some. You know, bring it up about right here when you do that. Bring it about right there because you want it close, close to the swivel. You want it close to the swivel because if you have it hanging, like I said, it'll be moving around and it'll get it just turn into a mess. And the fish won't bite it. They will not bite it if that bait is tangled up in that line. So you hold it out, you find the, the, the direction. You go back through it again. Thumbs in the way. And you're gonna kind of hold that swivel because that swivel will turn over. And you'll put it in backwards and the, and the knot won't work. Two. There's the two loops. And hold it, pin it where it can't get away. Because it'll, it'll mess up. It will mess up. And when you put it through there the wrong way, you're not tying it. So when you pull it, it'll just come off. And you're like, man, are you serious? You know, all that little stuff. And you ain't trying to do that. So... We're gonna do it about, about I, I'll do it five times. One, two, three, four, five. I used to do it six times, but that I found out it didn't take all that. So five times I get it. Okay, there it is. You stick, stick this free end through those two loops again. Lit tight. Bam, there it is. Now, I'm going to cut this off. I'm cutting the extra off. But I'm not going to cut it off too much. Because there is a truth to all of this. There is a truth to all of this, guys. And I do use my mouth a lot when I use my do my lines. So, you know, that's just part of it. Um, if you let that, if you have this too short. And I'm, I mean the lead line. If you have it too short, when the fish hits it and pulls it, it will pull on this knot. And this knot gets tighter and tighter and tighter. That's what it is. I mean, it's just a slip knot. And it gets tighter and tighter and tighter on itself. But if, when, if that fish is real big and you got it this short, if you catch two or three of those big old fish, sooner or later that knot is going to pull until it... It, it will come loose. But if you have it about this long, it won't ever come loose. I've had them on there for a long time, long periods of time, and they never came loose. So, you know, it won't come loose. So there it is. Now, again, here's your weight. Now, I'm talking about me. I personally have mine at least two feet. And I'm just folding it up so you can see how mine would be if it was in the water. Uh, just overlook this extra jump it'd be about two feet two feet and a half about two foot and a half deep okay now you already see how that hook is doing the hook is already bumping the line but if it was real long if that was real real long it'd just be a mess so you want it two foot three foot deep you know because you want it looking like this like if you had to lock and dam, I'm telling you, man, it's all kind of stuff down there. And I, and the reason I can say that all that junk is down at these lock and dams, these big giant lock and dams, because I have seen the the, the gates open. It's like a big transformer. It looks like a you know Optimus Prime and uh, and Megatron and them, you know. And yeah, I watch Transformers. Sure do. Been watching them since '85 when they first came out when I was a boy. But um. The door, when the gates open and it stands up, 
you know, water just floods out. I thought that was amazing and it was scary too because I hadn't seen anything like that when I first saw it. Um, the water just pours out, man, and parts of boats and parts of cars. Yeah, and, and horses, you know, they were dead, and cows and deer and all kind of stuff was just coming out and, and tires and stuff. And I mean, it was just going down the river and big giant trees, just amazing. And when you do go to the locking dams, uh, like in Aberdeen, you see trees that have washed up on the bank. I mean, they're like big sequoia looking trees, you know, giant, you know, ridiculous, you know, but that's how much water's coming out. But anyway, all the stuff washes out. So all that stuff is down in the bottom of, of, of the dam when it, when it spits all that water out, all that stuff washes down to the bottom at the spillway part of the dam. We catch the fish. And if you don't have a river rig, a three way swivel river rig, river rig, <laughs> excuse me, guys, you're not going to be able to catch anything because the, the bait is going to be down off in that and the fish can't bite that. They can't get to it. But if you got it up here, they can swamp there and grab it. Now, this last loop, you got these two loops. You tie that to your line, to your reel. Bam, same thing. Use the same knot. Um, check out my video. Uh, set, uh, set the hook at Bear Creek. Check it out. You get to see my river rig and you get to see it in action. So, check that video out. It's in my playlist, uh, Fun Fishing. There it is. All right. And guys, this is it. This is the three-way uh, river river uh, rig. I can't even talk this morning. There it is. You get this, I promise you. Uh, as long as you got um, some bait on there, the right bait on there, you're going to catch something. And uh, I'm telling you guys, if I can get this hook to turn around, you need to try these, these team catfish octopus hooks and these... Uh, these Kamagatsu octopus, hook, octopus hooks. You need to try these hooks. These hooks are super good. I mean, it's ridiculous how many more fish I, I've been catching. And I've been fishing since I was five. I've caught a lot, of, a lot of fish, but it really increased my catch rate. You know. So you know, guys, try the stuff out. If you like this video, uh, go check out my other videos, man. I got a lot of fishing videos. You know, <clears throat> it's about having fun. Uh, I try to be helpful to everybody and give them some cool tips. You know what I'm saying? The, to help them out and I believe it or not I even listen to people that you know they, they may be fishing where I'm at and you know and I listen to them and they you know and they may have a couple of tips for me you know and I listen to them <clears throat> uh, that's how I learned about all this stuff uh, you know years ago you know what I'm saying I learned about all this stuff years ago so uh, I'm getting hungry guys thanks for watching Keep on going fishing and have fun. All right. See you later.